Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game SO Terrigan Ting series on the Mr. FPJ D10 Nano Project, more specifically the Sega Saturn Core. Because as of this morning, there was a huge update provided by SRG320. We have a dual RAM core and a single RAM core that 100% fixes all of the interlacing issues on analog video out, and also on the dual RAM side of things reduces slowdown in some of the fighting games. And the timing is hilarious because tomorrow morning you're going to be watching the Mr. Monthly News Roundup, and I'm going to say not much has happened to Sega Saturn in the month of October. It's like he was listening to me. And just so you know, you can see here on my RetroTink 4K where the signal is going to change from 240p to 480i. And I just recently did a comparison video talking about this, and you could tell that the interlacing was no way, shape, or form correct. Now this is the image you're going to get out of all of the interlaced games on Sega Saturn, and to say that this is fundamentally an improvement would be a massive understatement. This looks absolutely incredible going through Direct Video 1 mode into my RetroTINK 4K. I did just capture this at 1080p though just for ease of use because I am doing this the same day it came out, and the rendering times are definitely much reduced. But this is such a huge change and one that people have been waiting to come to the core because any of the 480i games have run and they run decently well but they've looked absolutely ugly and that's just down to the improper and complete implementation of the 480i mode and don't think that that's any way shape or form a strike on SRG320's work he's been doing an incredible job it is just one of those things that hasn't quite worked yet correctly in the core but as of today it's 100% buttoned up do be aware this is for analog out though. I'm doing this via direct video one mode and passing the original signal into my RetroTINK 4K and then scaling it from there. So if you just plug this into your HDMI television, you may see a different result because you're using a different implementation of it. But this is a rock solid stable image that we're getting out of Mr. FPGA now. And if you don't have the ability to run direct video mode, it might take a little bit longer for this to come to the mainline core as far as that HDMI out is concerned. But the stability here in Fighters Mega mix looks outstanding. Now additionally he has re-implemented dual RAM usage. There's always been a dual RAM core but it's kind of been deprecated and not really essential but now he's moved over some of the features of the Sega Saturn core into that dual RAM to reduce slowdown in some of the fighting games. I am testing this on a dual 3.0 RAM configuration from Mr. Add-ons and while Fighters Mega Mix has all of that slowdown basically removed I still did get a little bit of it in Dead or Alive and Fighting Viper so it is still a work in progress. It isn't perfect but it definitely is fixing some of those slowdown spots we had before. I do not know whether or not dual RAM is going to be essential when this core is finished, but right now the use case scenario for the dual RAM builds has come back for Sega Saturn, and the only other core that really uses dual RAM whatsoever is the Atari Jaguar core, and obviously that is unfinished and just kind of an appendix for Mr. FPGA. But this motion right here, the fluidity, the pacing, the speed, and the complete lack of that interlacing mess is just a fundamental night and day difference compared to where we were before. This is what you remember these games looking like when you played them on a CRT television, except now you can have them on a flat panel, an LCD, an OLED, at 1080p or 4K, whatever you want. But do be aware the 4K is only delivered by that retro tank. You do not get that scaling out of Mr. FPGA. Or if you get the Pixel FX more 4K, you can do the exact same thing. It was just that the RetroTrink 4K was currently in my capture chain, so it was the easiest device to reach for. Now taking a look at Dead or Alive, the FMV video always was clear when we'd actually play the game, and it looks just as good here in Direct Video 1 mode. And do be aware, if you haven't played with Direct Video yet, and you do have a scaler that allows for HDMI in, it is a very fun functionality of the Mister. It's basically going to auto-scale the image for you, depending on what scaler you use. On something like the RetroTrink 4k it scales it perfectly to my screen for capture or for my television it looks outstanding doing it now you see here when we come into the character selection screen i'm going to go right into the match and i'm going to show you how it actually changes the signal in real time you'll see next match here and you'll see some corruption on the screen which is normal for a scaler and now we've popped up into direct video one mode for adi and we're getting again an incredibly stable image out of dead or alive now there is still some slowdown in this game even though I am using the dual RAM core, but the slowdown has definitely lessened. And again, this is basically the first day where dual RAM has been doing this, so I'm sure it is an iterative process and it's still work in progress when it comes to these sort of things. The slowdown seems to be there, just not as much, but you can definitely see as Kasumi gets up there, the engine and the overall speed of the game is slowing down. And that is because the speed of the game is tied to that refresh, so there is still something going on here, but it seems to be happening to a lot of fighting games that use 480i, so there's probably something there in the code that just isn't interpreting something correctly, and it'll be interesting 
to find out exactly what that is. But what we really can't talk enough about is just how stable of an image this is. From the background to the characters to everything else on screen, that complete lack of flicker is so fundamentally different than what we had before. Previously, I would say that the interlace games really weren't worth playing because they did have that weird jumping around image, and that's completely changed today. There is nothing about this image whatsoever that I don't think looks like perfection, but if you see anything you don't like, leave me a comment down below because I would be curious. As we move into the next round here, that lightning in the background looks correct, all of the 2D assets look correct, that infinite plane that we're fighting on looks good, and all of the characters look great because Dead or Alive is one of the prettiest fighting games on the Sega Saturn in my opinion. They have better character models I think than even Virtual Fighter 2, but I'm sure some people disagree with me in the comments below. So which one is it going to be? Is it Virtual Fighter 2 or is it Dead or Alive? And as we move into the last match here, again, you'll see it switch from 240p over to 480i. And that is the nice thing about the RetroTink 4K is it's basically immediately picking up that signal and pivoting it on DV1 compared to something like the Frame Meister, where you would lose the image for 2-3 to three seconds while it actually waited to pick up the signal. So it is definitely a much improved scaling experience with a much improved core experience at the same time. But the last time we compared these two things together, we did it with Virtual Fighter 2. So let's move right into that comparison here because these menus, the selection screens are always 240p. And when you actually load it into the game, you went to Saturn's high resolution mode, which was 480i. And again, you can immediately tell that this is a rock solid stable image. And there's not going to be any sound sample for this video because it's all about the visuals. The sound is completely unchanged. So before you ask me that in the comments down below, just remember that the sound is no different. And this is a game that really didn't see any slowdown so whether you play it on the single ram core or the dual ram core you're going to get the exact same experience and i did in the background test dead or alive on the single ram core and it did slow down in more instances but not so much to be a fundamentally huge difference so we really don't know whether or not dual ram's ever going to be 100 necessary so don't run out and upgrade your mr fpj after watching this video you really should wait for this core to take its place in the finish line and then you can make your hardware selection depending on what you want to do because it really is only these fighting games that have the slowdown and it's only the fighting games that this dual ram build is addressing it doesn't really seem to have much of a function outside of this but of course it is still like hour six so there are things that could still be discovered so we'll just have to wait and see but if you think of any other saturn games that aren't fighting games that do have slowdown on the core leave me a comment down below and maybe i'll test them for the next part of this video because i'm sure there's some examples of games out there that do have slowdown that i can't think of right now and i know somebody on mr discord was going to take a look at grandia because that did have a tiny bit as well but if you can think of any games that have that slowdown leave it down below and i will check them out in due course because you can see here a tiny bit still exists in virtual fighter 2 but it's extremely minimal and honestly it is a nice trade-off considering we have this full interlace video mode working well here on direct video one it is night and day different and i can't get enough of this is probably the best that the Sega Saturn is ever going to look when it comes to interlace unless you're playing on an old school TV and that really is the reality of these sort of things this video mode was designed to work with consumer television sets over something like a composite video signal back in the 90s and you'll see here on the fence and fighting vipers there can still be a tiny bit of shake that is not a problem with the core that's just what happens when you handle interlace video even with something as good as retro tank 4k there's no such thing as perfect interlace handling when it comes to an lcd tv or a capture card this was meant for consumer grade crt televisions and that's where it's always is going to look best but honestly here it's like 99.8 percent of the way as good as a crt and that's about as much as you could ever expect out of new technology trying to approximate what an old video game console would be doing and as we load in again you can see a little bit of the slowdown in this match it is much better than it was the last time and i'm curious to see exactly what srg 320 is going to do with dual ram in the future now as far as what size module you need for that secondary ram if you want to use it i've seen people test 32 64 and 128 megabyte sticks and everything seems to be working exactly the same so you don't need to have dual 128s that is just what my setup is but i honestly recommend if you ever do upgrade to dual ram just match them with both the version number as well as the size you're going to get the best result out of it moving forward but if we take a look at the next match it's where the slowdown comes out 
quote unquote the worst. It's still not too bad whatsoever, but pay attention to Candy versus Picky here. When Candy starts with that initial strike, obviously I am controlling her. You're going to see the in-game speed slightly dip a little bit right there with that punch and that kick and that backhand right there. It probably drops down to half speed, which makes me wonder if it has something to do with the interlace handling, just as a presumption on how those fields would be interpreted. But if you have any ideas about what that might be, leave them down below. But what we can't dispute is this picture is absolutely pristine, looks incredible coming out of Mr. FPJ, and looks even better going through the RetroTink 4K. But if you do have a scaler, tell me which one it is down below. And if you just want something to do Direct Video 1 mode in HDMI in, do not discount the more 4K. It is much cheaper and does as good of a job on this type of Direct Video 1 mode as the RetroTink 4K does, and it definitely does it at a cheaper price. And hey, saving a buck is never a bad thing, especially in retro gaming, because there's only 100 things that we all want to buy pretty much every week. But definitely check this new core out, especially if you want to play these games. Because the video quality is 100% fixed, it looks absolutely gorgeous coming out of the Mr. FPJ, and it's about as good as a Sega Saturn ever could look. And do remember tomorrow when you watch that monthly news update video, I'm going to say that nothing's happened with Sega Saturn, and hopefully soon maybe they'll fix the interlaced video mode, and I basically predicted the future even though I didn't realize it. Now tomorrow I've got a video that's going to have about a minute that doesn't make too much sense. But run, don't walk over to Mr. FPJ Discords, grab this core, install it manually, start playing around with it, you're going to have a lot to love. But short of that, we're done, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.